Welcome to Phuket News TV and today we're talking dogs. Now uh, it's a slightly different story than usual because just two days ago in Saigon there was a very important press conference and from that press, press conference they've already collected some 200,000 signatures for a very important campaign. What that campaign is we'll tell you next on Phuket News TV. Pride is back for 2015. Phuket's most colourful annual event is kicking off on April 19th for a week of festivities, parties, competitions, cruises and sport. To get a full list of activities for this year's events, go to Phuket-Pride.org. Phuket Pride 2015. Freedom to live. Welcome back to Phuket News TV. Very important story and it's been an ongoing campaign that you might be aware of here in Phuket and Thailand. But uh, only on Tuesday a campaign was started in Vietnam, the source of a lot of the demand for dog meat and the dog meat trade and of course the exportation from Thailand into Vietnam of stray dogs and no better person to discuss this topic and the uh, the new campaign in Vietnam than John Daly, the head of Soy Dog. Thanks for joining us, John. Thank you, Tim. I'm just going to interrupt you straight away there and let you know that the dogs going from Thailand were not predominantly stray dogs, but stolen pet dogs or temple dogs. Stray dogs are far too difficult for the snatchers to catch, so that was, uh, I'll just correct you on that. <laughs> okay, how many dogs are we talking about leaving Thailand each year? Up to 2014, or early 2014, we're talking an estimated half a million a year, which was confirmed by the village in uh, Vietnam where all the dogs were taken, first of all, for forced feeding, increasing their weight before being sold on to butchers in Hanoi. All right, what are you trying to achieve with this uh, campaign, the press conference on Tuesday? Right, the press conference on Tuesday was to launch a media campaign in Vietnam targeting young people basically to try and change the attitude to eating dog meat there. Um, the demand for dog meat in Vietnam is very high. There's an estimated five to seven million dogs a year consumed there, which is second only to China in Asia. Uh, the second is very much the health aspects. Um, it's no coincidence that China and Vietnam, which are the largest consumers of dog meat, also have the highest incidence of rabies in humans. Um, so by eating dogs, you can catch rabies? You can. If dog meat is properly cooked, it will kill the virus. But there have been numerous cases of people who have contacted rabies through eating undercooked meat, handling dogs, etc. And tests carried out in, on dogs slaughtered in Hanoi and Ho Chi Minh City show a significant number of carrying the rabies virus. And some of these dogs do escape, so when they're transporting them great distances, they're literally spreading the virus in the country. And all these countries have pledged to eliminate rabies by 2020. And although stopping the dog meat trade will not wipe out rabies straight away, certainly you will never eliminate rabies while ever this goes on. Sure. If you see how these dogs are killed, prepared, it's a dirty trade, it's dirty meat, and people are not really aware of this. And that is the second real factor, the health side. The third one, which is, well, not unique to Vietnam, it's increasingly happening in China as well, is that estimated 70% of these dogs are actually stolen pets. And the thieves who steal the dogs, who are criminals, um, if they're caught by the authorities, it's classified as a misdemeanor. Yeah. So it's literally a slap on the wrist, nothing else. Yet the profits they make are as much as in trafficking dogs, which is, sorry, trafficking drugs, which is, uh, they face the death sentence. It's not difficult to see why it's such a popular crime. So what's happening there at the moment is that more and more villages, and bear in mind the dog meat trade is focused in the cities in the north and yes. some in Ho Chi Minh, is that these dogs are being sourced in the centre and south of Vietnam and villages are taking the law into their own hands, violent clashes, 
A number of dog thieves have been killed, as have a number of pet owners. And this is absolutely ridiculous in this day and age. And yeah. The government need to do something about it. So what you're trying to do is really affect a, a generational change. You're not expecting things to happen tomorrow, but you're hoping that the, the youngsters that you're communicating to are going to grow up with a, a new idea about uh, eating dog. Yeah. I mean, 65% of the population of Vietnam is under 30. And like most of the young people in Asia, they are becoming more environmentally aware and ethically minded. Um, so you've, this, is the, this is the focus of the campaign, the younger people, obviously. And it's, the reason for the timing also is that in May there is a discussion in the Vietnamese government regarding what they term the veterinary bill, which is a very weak bill, but we're hoping that they may bring in some uh, changes. There is already a law in Vietnam uh, regarding the transporting of dogs across different provinces. That is illegal, but it's not enforced, and so we're calling for that to be enforced as a first measure. In some ways, let's just step back from yeah. all this, um, this is foreigners coming in to uh, a country that has a history of eating dog, mm. and we're trying to say, you are wrong. Um, there's a sort of a moral problem with that, isn't there? There's a sense of colonialism. We're trying to retrain them how to how we think they should act. No, I think it's to go back to the um, the methods used. Whatever this is inhumane, and there's no place for animal cruelty anywhere in the world. It makes the difference. It's not about cultural differences. In reality, Vietnam. Uh, dog meat started with hill tribes coming in over from China many years ago who traditionally would keep livestock and dogs and excess dogs they would kill for food out of necessity. It's now grown into uh, the industry it is today based on myths that for example uh, it's lucky to eat dogs at certain times yeah. of the month. And black dogs are better. Yeah than, that's seen actually yeah. more Cambodia but okay. you've got uh, yeah, and men believe it's going to make them powerful. It's going to be, it's, a, it's an aphrodisiac. And I tell them, you know, there's a little blue pill available, which is far, which actually does work. None of these beliefs are true, but yeah. nevertheless people believe them. And yeah. I think, again, with young people, they realise it isn't true. Sure. But we also have to remember that dogs were never bred by man as meat. You know, uh, going back about tens of hundreds of thousand years probably, you know, all dogs come from wolves and domesticated wolves and man domesticated them to in effect protect homes, crops, livestock and later obviously became companions. The dogs are almost uh, a sort of genetically varied by man. They are, oh yes, yes. As, as are cattle, sheep, pigs, but if you notice they're all grazing animals, yes. you can never successfully breed dogs on a mass the type of animal they are yeah. for food. It yeah. just doesn't work. It's impossible. John, um, do you think there's a conversation within Vietnam about this topic as well, or is it a taboo topic not to discuss it? What do you think is happening there? Well, I don't think it has been discussed much, but as you know, this, this launch we did on Tuesday, which was attended by uh, many of the top uh, entertainers, singers, actors, uh, film directors, uh, Way to this go. sort of pe people, people yeah. who are respected in the country, yeah, and a lot of them were involved in the making of three videos which are being used. And speaking to them, you know, everybody in Vietnam is fully aware of eating dog meat. Many of them have, yes, but none of them, even you know, they were shocked when they actually saw what was behind it. And as I say, I think a lot of people are not really aware of what is behind this trade. Have you eaten dog? No, never. Okay. If you were offered it, would you give it a try? No, but I don't eat meat, full stop. So okay. Yeah. But right. no, I wouldn't. No, not just like, no, I wouldn't eat dog. No. no, I think I'd suffer the same problem. I just couldn't yeah. do it. No. Yeah. John, thank you very much. Uh, congratulations to Jill and yourself, as usual, and the work of the Soy Foundation, uh, Soy Dog Foundation, and the, uh, the great list of volunteers who just work endlessly to try and, uh, and change things that need to be changed. And congratulations. Thank you. John Daly there from the Soy Dog Foundation. And if you'd like to find out more about uh, what Soy Dog Foundation have done in Phuket and around Thailand and find out more about the dog meat trade, go to soydog.org. Thanks for joining us on Phuket News TV.
buongiorno Bonjour Hey Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah Buenos dias Nin hao Здравствуйте Привет Guten Tag, ich spreche Deutsch Sodi kap We are ready to provide international medical service with warm Thai hospitality Call us at 1719